this five o'clock in the afternoon on uh, April the 24th. Uh, we are here for the Finance Committee meeting. To my uh, left is Mr. John Swayzer, uh, member of the committee. To my right, Mr. Todd Sievert, also a member of the committee. My name is Tom Kendall and I'm chair. Uh, I believe we have one, one item to come before uh, this body today. So, Mr. Titterington, will you kick us off, I please? Kick it off. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you have a report from, uh, uh, from staff. Uh, we are asking that council approve a loan in the amount of $1.4 million uh, to the CIC, the Community Improvement Corporation, um, who would then loan funds to the Sherwood Shopping Center Revitalization Project on uh, North Market Street. Uh, the CIC last week in their meeting uh, conditionally agreed to be a participant in the revitalization of the center through these loans. Um, the condition was, the, the only condition was that the council of course approve it since they're only one party to it. Um, the conditions uh, include, or their participation, I should say, would include accepting loans totaling 1.4 million, uh, and then making the loans in the same amount to uh, uh, the proposed buyers or the applicants uh, in this project. The loans would be split uh, two into two. One would be $900,000 that, uh, that would be loaned to the CIC uh, for uh, no more than two years uh, at three at, at one and a half percent interest rate uh, that would be payable at the end of the two-year period back to the city principal plus the one and a half percent interest um, the the condition there then is that the CIC would then loan that nine hundred thousand dollars to uh, to the LLC uh, with the um, the requirements that that loan be uh, no more than two years, so it'd be a two-year loan, uh, payable, uh, I believe, monthly to the CIC, yes. interest only uh, at three percent. The other loan would be a five hundred thousand dollar loan. Uh, that would be more in the lines of the traditional uh, small business loan fund requirements. Uh, that would be loan to the CIC and then ultimately to the LLC uh, uh, at a rate of four and a half percent principal and interest would be owed monthly uh, and payable back to the city uh, both of those sources of funds would be payable back to the general fund uh, and using the CIC is the legally approved way of uh, of doing this and that's why we got the CIC involved in fact the enabling legislation from the uh, Ohio Revised Code uh, one of the specific purposes of the CIC is to perform these kind of functions and so that's why we uh, created the CIC years ago uh, and and why the CIC felt comfortable being a party to this agreement okay. I think that covers everything. We are asking for emergency legislation, much like other loans. Time is of the essence to uh, to close to close the loan documents uh, once we do the due diligence, and then get the property acquired so that approximately six hundred thousand dollars worth of improvements uh, using equity from the uh, partners in the LLC uh, will be used uh, to do that. We will have uh, collateral that will include uh, both uh, the value of the building as well as guarantee, uh, personal guarantees of uh, each of the uh, partners in the LLC. Uh, Mr. Friggy, did I miss anything? Do you have anything to add? I don't believe so. Thank you. Now, there are uh, several of us here who are on that uh, committee. Um, my, my question, Mr. Titterington, if there is a question for the CIC, will you or Mr. Dando or Mr. Frege address that then? Uh, Mr. Dando is the, you're the secretary to the, Correct. To the, uh, to the CIC, okay. so yes, he is available to answer any questions that we can't. Okay, all right. Um, I, I have a question. 
Okay. Is it appropriate at this time? Yeah, okay. No, I was just going to open it up to you. Guys, so. uh, the loan, the nine hundred thousand dollar loan. Are we doing that in one fell swoop, or are we going to do it like a build out on a construction loan uh, for a, where we're going to go and check and get you know validate that so much work's been done and then pay it? I don't know what's that called a draw so, or something. Yeah. I think that's how the, how most construction loans. So are done. the whole one point four million is to be used for the purchase of the property. So it would not be so a it's not for the rehab draw. at all. It would okay. be all, all so we're once. just loaning them one point four divided into the two loans correct and we'll just do that in one fell swoop interest At will start closing. to accrue on the full amount immediately yep. and will be first priority plus the personal guarantees yes. CIC, correct. Will be first priority. CIC will be first priority well and we'd be first priority with CIC right I'm just saying that the, yeah. the first mortgage and the second mortgage the 900 and the 500 will be in the name of the CIC I understand, but we'll have a we'll have a, an agreement with CIC then and to we'll pay them. Back. So we'll be the first. In we'll have a note with CIC that we'll be first priority on. In return, return, we will have a note with the note with the yeah. CIC. Yes. The CIC will issue like an assignment of rents and leases as well as a note back to the city, okay. not not a traditional mortgage, um, because they don't own the property on it. But there will be an assignment of rents and leases on it. Right, but if there's any default, our rem remedy is with CIC, Correct. and CIC's remedy is with the loan. Is with yeah. Right. So who would have the property at that point? We would. Mm -hmm. The city or the CIC. At, at what, which point? If should there be a default, who would who who would the property default back to? CIC. Initially with the CIC, but then we then would call we would, it for the, through the CIC. Yeah, and I think so that's where you were going with the question. Right. But, but, and I think, but we would be the next in line with CIC. Right. So, I mean, if they default, CIC is going to default to us, and then we go back. I mean, it's just a, it's no different than that's than correct. any other line of right line of credit going down <clears> the stream. So we we are just we're still going to be first in line, unless for some reason CIC doesn't wants to try to. Hey, keep it, but yeah, <coughs> that, that would be one. All right, good. Okay. Anything? Do you have any other questions? No, I don't have. I mean, I don't okay. Have questions. John. So the money we're going to loan to the CIC, that they're in turn going to loan to um, Mr. Harlow. Does that money get paid back to the CIC, and do they keep that seed money, or does that get paid back to the city somehow? The uh, the CIC, the loan agreement between the city and the CIC requires the CIC to uh, to return the nine hundred thousand dollars at the end of the two years plus one and a half percent interest. The CIC, as the administrator of the loan, and to uh, to start to develop some assets and equity. Would uh, would charge an additional one and a half percent to the LLC that will remain in their bank, uh, in their account. But the rest of the interest and the principal from the nine hundred thousand comes uh, comes back. The other five hundred thousand is the same arrangement, but it'll come uh, as yeah as a monthly principal and interest. That's why they're they're split out, and that'll be over twenty years, not the two years. So it'll be a more traditional, traditional revolving loan type. Uh, but that money goes to the CIC then, project. that they in turn can use for? No, uh, no the $500,000 will come back to the city as well as all of the interest from that $500,000 loan. That's run the same as what our current small business loans. Right. Okay. Right. Except it will not, that 500000 will not ultimately reside in the Small business loan right. fund, it'll come back to the general fund. But not that, yeah, so it's not the revolving loan fund, it's it going to go not. straight back right. to the general That's fund. That's correct. Yeah. Right. And so, really, 20 years from now, everything's back plus interest. But two years, the big chunk, two correct. years from now, we're back with $900,000 back in the general fund. Yeah, plus, plus one and a half percent. Plus one and a half percent. And see, well, and CIC is going to make one and a half percent too. So, even though we're separate entities, we're still getting 3% return on our investment. Correct. And we want the investment because it's necessary and it's a dilapidated area. And so. Okay, and that that allows the CIC to start building up a a fund then also. Sure. That. Okay, John. Um, 
will this hurt our bond rating at all? I know we've talked about maybe a fire station or something like that down the road. Is this going to affect that at all? It will not. We're not borrowing money. Uh, we're lending it. So it will not affect our bond rating whatsoever. No. Okay. I have nothing further. Okay. Are there any other questions? Mr. Lux. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Um, you know, I'm thinking about back in 1996, we kind of went through the same thing. We had a, a local owner who got a loan from the city through the CDBG program for, I believe, $400,000. What's going to prevent this in this process from us not being back here 20 years from now, talking about the Sherwood Shopping Center, talking about improvements that need to be made? Instead of 1.4 million, it could be 2.4 million. Are there any protections that can be made to ensure that the, the building doesn't fall into out-of-state owners' hands at some period of time in the future? What, what can we build into this to ensure that, that we're not having the same conversation 20 years in the future? Well, I don't think that um, uh, any, any kind of plan can try to, uh, to prevent something out 5, 10, 20 years out. Um, you know, there are so many factors that, and things that happen, you know, in the global market, in the macro, in the micro, in the, you know, in the, in the region, you just never, you never know. Um, if you look at the, um, the history of that shopping center, uh, through the years, my understanding is, uh, I wasn't here in 96, nor was I here, uh, in, uh, uh any further back than that, um, that we've had both out of town as well as local owners. Uh, the, the current owner, for whatever reason, uh, we have not agreed with their investment strategy. We don't understand their overall portfolio and how this property has, uh, has, has played into that overall uh, portfolio or that investment <coughs> strategy. And, you know, we've been uh, diligent in uh, making sure that they've met the minimum requirements. Whether they've been an out-of-town owner or a local owner, however, uh, really, if you look at other shopping centers in the region, uh, in the state, even nationally, uh, whether it's local or out-of-town ownership, you know, there, it's, it's tough to draw a, uh, um, a correlation between uh, vacancy rates occupancy, uh, et cetera, just because they're local as opposed to, to, to national. Our, our objective here and what makes this project a one-of-a-kind unique project that the CIC and the, uh, and the staff and even the RLF uh, committee, because this, this conversation started at the Small Business uh, RLF uh, Loan Committee, is that uh, you know, it is a central part of a larger study uh, area in an area that is uh, um, continuing to, uh, to grow in residential population uh, and is approximately, that, that area represents about a third of the population of Troy um, and is seeing some uh, turnover uh, and some changing de demographics, which is why we all agreed that we should have the consultant study look at, at the region. So our, in our initiative, our objective, our opportunity here is to really influence and, and affect some significant change in that center on both sides of Fossway, by the way, because there is a piece that's, a, uh, that's south uh, of Fossway. Uh, and is so unique and, and regional in, in potential impact, at least in that region or that area of town, uh, which would, if possible, use that shopping center and the, those, area, those area developments as their primary destinations, if not for convenience, but for more, uh, more activity. Uh, the, you know, that's what makes this unique and something that is worthy of uh, consideration versus maybe somebody coming in and asking for 
a similar type arrangement when they're dealing with a, a, a different a different owner a different property uh, having said that though back to your point about the local versus uh, the national it really if you look at the history of the applications that we've uh, that the council we've recommended and the council's approved there have been a mix of local and national applicants um, to to be able to influence the long term especially in the 20-year window by putting caveats on there um, I'm not sure what developer would want to get involved in something like that. It's not something that the CIC want, uh, entertained at, as a discussion uh, at their level. And it may put some additional strings and attach some additional strings that might have un unintended consequences. You don't know, but it's always possible. So, Bill, I mean, I, Bill, can I, can I tell you, because I, I, you and I talked about this a little bit on Friday, and I just want to tell you where, where my thought analysis came down when I looked at it I looked at it objectively not so much even if you did if even if you looked at it locally versus if somebody from Indianapolis was going to come over the question to me was say the developer was from Indianapolis with the dilapidation of the of that shopping center with somebody who's willing to come in and invest setting in this chair at least from this committee I think I would have done the same thing with a even an out-of-state developer uh, because of the this particular parcel of property now if they wanted to do it on the other side this is such a a pinnacle I mean you grew up there I grew up there we went to McCroy's we went to m and we we need to revitalize this area and we're blessed to have the people who want to do it be the people who are investing locally but Truthfully, even if I was looking at it objectively from an out-of-state person who came in here, as long as we had the guarantees, we have the mortgages, we're no worse off as a city. I, I truthfully, we're, we truly are blessed that these people yeah. have stepped forward to do it. But even if we weren't, we're no worse off than where we are right now. Because right now we got a guy who could care two flips about what happened right. to that shopping center, and. Even if it fell back into our hands, which God forbid we don't want to be in the <laughs> landlord tenant business, now, Patrick, I see you shaking your head. But even if it fell back into our hands, we're better off taking the risk with whomever came forward with this idea because that is such an integral part of Troy and really needs a, an infusion of, of, you know someone who's willing to, to take the bull by the horns and, and get it I mean that I walked through that whole shopping center yesterday I was walking my dog and it's I mean there's nothing in there left except for needlers and I mean it's you look in the windows and the it's just a mess and and God you know may God bless you and keep you Mr. Harlow for taking it on but it's it's going to be a it's, it's going to be a, a, an endeavor that we will truly truly turn into a gem and it's a diamond in the rough, and I hope you do a good job with it. Yeah. We we are at a point with that facility if something's not done. I know we hate to use this word in Troy, but it's on the verge of a blight. I mean, there, it's falling apart. You know, the the rest bad, and and you know, my wife and I are excited because you know, 40 years ago, we used to walk and ride our bikes over that way and have dinner and and all that. And we're we're looking forward to being able to do that again so yeah and on the other side you know when when i first got on council 11 years ago and, and you were there too we were looking at five-year pro formas where we couldn't do anything mm -hmm. we were looking at, at yeah. negative pro formas and and now we're at a point in the city with our finances where we're able to do things like this to improve the community which is what we should be doing in the first place so yeah i'm I'm all for what we're doing here. Yeah. I, I just think you know, the, the definition of success shouldn't necessarily be make sure that the loan gets paid back, because I think that'll happen. I think the definition of success needs to be what's that place going to look like 20 years from now? And, and what, what can we do to ensure that it's, it's a, still a viable part of our community? And so just to follow up, because you're, you're, you're correct, in the 20-year window are the kind of planning and the, the comprehensive planning documentation that MKSK is going to present on April 26th, for example. You know, 
as, as I mentioned before, you know, there are questions about, well, does this set a precedence? And, and, and council, you know, whenever you look at an application for loan funds, um, you know, you haven't set a precedent because you, you awarded the last, you, you know, you approved the last application. You're looking at each one uh, on its own merits. And, and because we're using the, uh, the CIC, there's that additional hur uh, hurdle. But in this case, being that it's such a regional key focal point of that study, part of, you know, you can't ensure success, but promoting as much, you know, and encouraging as much success 20 years from now is by investing in this key property, you know, we expect to see a lot more redevelopment going on uh, north and even a little <coughs> south of the corridor. And as that, those redevelopments occur, then everything can feed off of each other. And, it, and, it, and even north of that, as more residential goes in, you know, we, we bring more of the population that's going to feed that. So we can put all these elements in place. So, you know, without guaranteeing what's going to happen in 20 years, at least we're trying to set them up for as much, uh, set that property as well as that whole area up for as much success as possible. Well, do we feel like we're in a much better position now to ensure success than we were 20 years ago? And I know that's probably a hard, <laughs> difficult to question, yeah. and it's it's question and answer, but I mean, it's yeah. like, do we, do we feel like we're doing the requisite things to make sure that, that we're continuing the vitality of that shopping center? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I think so too, and I think, you know, with- Without with, equivocation, yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, and and I and I look and and uh, you know, Mr. Harlow, I think has proven himself in in our city and and what he's been willing to do and and all and and you know, personally, I've got a lot of confidence in him and his partners that that they can make this a viable long term you know er, area and I I know. Frank has said himself that that you know he wants that the northeast area is the area that he's concentrating a lot of his efforts on. So, and I think it it be behooves him to with him doing that to make sure it's successful. Yeah, sure. So. And you look at the comprehensive plan, and, and and there's growth planned all the way out Market Street in the in the future. So when you ask about a 20-year plan. <coughs> If you look at the comprehensive plan, it's right there. So, but even if you look at today, I mean, success breeds success, and we're facing MCRC leaving across the street. There, I, I assume that one place is going. You've got the other shopping center that the dentist is in. That's probably has a 80 percent uh, vacancy rate. Uh, so, you know, if if, if this works then that does bring more people in i mean then that make make mcrc an attractive property i mean look you know that's that's the the hope and and that's what i i think Th that's why w w when we talked bill i, I mean it, it just really hopefully is the, the spark that ignites the that whole area into some redevelopment um so yeah i i think it's vital plus i i mean i moved from out to that area into that neighborhood and I think there's lots of other people that are moving into that neighborhood and I think with what Frank's doing north of that neighborhood you got 400 houses or something coming in down the pike so uh, there should be enough people now people got to use it I mean that's Robin's point with needlers once stuff are there you know then the you know and the balls in our court. The balls in our court, right? Yeah. Build it and they will come, as the uh, <laughs> saying says. So. so, all right. Are there any other questions? I have a question, Tom. Yeah. Um, is the, the strip mall on Foss part of the Sherwood? Right behind the Speedway? Yeah. Yes, it is. Right next to us. So that's part of the whole redevelopment? It is. Okay. The other day in the CIC meeting, um, Right at the end, there were some things that were mentioned, and I didn't clarify that with you earlier today, but some of the, um, the closing costs and some of the things that go along with getting a loan, how is that wrapped into this? Okay, so there are some things that we're requiring happen and, and that are underway. 
um, a, a confirmation of the uh, the survey make sure that the lines are, are still correct uh, as well as some environmental some basic environmental work uh, uh, research phase one is what it's called uh, those costs would be paid by the uh, developer or the buyer at closing so as part of the closing as part of the closing yeah. okay. yes Any other questions? All right, so we have before us to uh, a vote as emergency whether uh, we go forward with uh, the city loaning the money to the CIC to uh, go forward with this project. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to, yeah. but real quick, because I just want to touch on this because it was in our finance committee. The moratorium, we're not touching. We, that doesn't have anything to do with finance committee, right? Because it's in our notes as as Just paragraph C, but, but we don't have, we're not extending it or, or release points, we're not even doing we're anything with the moratorium, that. right? Uh, we will be recommending that. Are we asking? We're not asking that yes. tonight. No. Yes. Where does it say? Well, that's, different. I don't oh, that's the next item. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So, okay. So, the, the uh, part A is authorizing the two loans and doing that as, uh, as an emergency legislation. Uh, reappropriating the funds associated with that and then yes the third thing is to extend the moratorium uh, you will you will get a better idea of that on April 26th as part of the overhaul uh, overall presentation by MKSK and the reason is is just to make sure that you've got enough time to do this but also uh, start to implement or start to at least regurg uh, digest <laughs> not regurgitate or digest <laughs> uh, uh, you know the study recommendations and and make sure that there's enough time because as you know uh, any time you deal with zoning matters that's a three to five month process okay so this is a six month extension of this would be a six month just to cover all of our bases yes okay and we can always terminate it early yeah yeah absolutely all and right. we and we would and the developers know that these certain zoning clear classifications are suspended uh, are, are being, under being a moratorium the correct so but that's all under the same legislation right or is that a separate, is that three separate, uh, separate legislation separate. Yeah. 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 Three, separate. Three. Three. Uh, separate three three uh, yes okay would have to be. Right. And i all just three had that in my notes i just wanted to make sure we were doing that so and all three are emergency uh, yes, please. Okay. So then I have a question. If we're extending the moratorium, mm -hmm. how do we decide when to get rid of the moratorium? Are we picking and choosing what we're tossing the moratorium out for? Um, that's a good question, but it's one that um, MKSK would really help us define at the point, you know, the point. Uh, I have not looked at the details of the of the study uh, presentation, other than to see just generally what they're what they're looking at recommending. Um, so as we talk to them about particular areas and properties, and whether or not they're zoned appropriately, or if we should make some adjustments, if you know. If, if there are some adjustments that need to be made, then we would start rezoning the rezoning process. And once that process is over, then we could uh, uh, suspend or eliminate the moratorium. I just don't want to see us get into trouble with saying, yeah, you can start a business, but you can't. Well, I mean, the moratorium, if it goes to six months, it applies to every everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that it keeps any businesses from going into Sherwood for six months. No, 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 no. no. The, the moratorium just, just had some specific ones that got defined. Right, yeah. there were only a, a, a short list of specific ones that couldn't be. Done. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but when's that expire? Like, what did we say? Uh, is it? Yeah, June. I was going to say. So why are we extending another six months now? Uh, because we're doing all this and it's all related to Sherwood so it makes sense to do it now and, and knowing that um, April 26th we know that MKSK is going to be recommending that we extend it since we're doing this now we should do it all at once it's all part of the same 
Yeah, I mean, six yeah. one half yeah, time, I guess. But it, so, are we extending it in another six months from today, uh, or are we extending it, it six from months the, from the expiration date? From, from, from the expiration date. Yeah. So we're doing in eight months. Up to eight months, but from today, yes. But it would be, yeah. And we could six, change, but we can change it. But we, yeah, we time. would. We could reduce it. It'd be a maximum of another six months, is what it would amount to. Yeah. So, and when we take it off moratorium, it goes back to its original zoning. It goes back to the zoning that in that at that point is in place. So if if we make some recommendations for rezonings and you pass them, then at that point the zoning has changed, and that's what's in effect. Okay. But if there's no recommendation, uh, if there are no recommendations to change zoning, and and we're comfortable with getting you know getting rid of the moratorium, then whatever's in place is what's in effect. Okay. Would it make sense just to extend it for 90 days instead of 180? Um, because the rezoning process can vary so much, and it's a minimum of a three-month period because you've got three readings. Plus, you've got the planning commission, which can go one meeting or even two meetings. Uh, we didn't feel like 90 days would be quite enough. Okay. And we don't have the, the MKSK study until next week, so that's one less week that we would have. Yeah. I thought we get the MKSK Thursday. study tomorrow. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday. Wow, is it that quick? Two yeah. days from now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is why Time I, I, I guess, yeah, I, it is. I don't, yeah. look, I, I, I don't like to restrict trade at all so just from a philosophical point but I guess if we, I don't know I don't honestly see a need for that if we've got two more months under a moratorium and we can extend it if there's recommendations to do some rezonings then um, two months is not enough because you cannot get a rezoning done in a two-month time period yep, statutorily you have three council readings, a public hearing, you've got 30 days to... But the rezoning wouldn't fall into the moratorium, right? The moratorium said these specific <laughs> zoning classifications aren't going to come into Sherwood at this time, right? That's all we did with the moratorium. You, were, you weren't going to have a, a junk store, you weren't right. going to have... Right, so the moratorium expires, and somebody months. applies, mm -hmm. yes, and so somebody applies for something while you're looking at rezoning, I don't believe that puts a toll on it. Well, what would happen? I mean, no, it doesn't. And what would happen is, is if, um, say, for instance, you're on the second reading of a, you propose to rezone some parcel out there. The city proposes to rezone it, and the moratorium ex expires. An applicant could come in and ask for a use that is different from what the proposed rezonings for, and then that use would be grandfathered in. To me, it's a non sequitur, but I don't care. So I'm all well, I mean, it's it. a, it's, it's, that's it, a real it, it, possibility. It, 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 sure, and I could win the lottery tomorrow, but I'm. It, it's fine. I, it, I, I'm not going to create an issue over it. I just, I don't think we need to do it right now. But that's okay. I'm not going to be a thorn in the side. So I'll vote for it. Okay. So for first, then we've got the the first legislation is the. Lo lo loaning of the right. money to CIC right. as emergency. Okay. John? I'm good as emergency. I'm good. Okay. Absolutely. So forward with that. Uh, the second is to au authorize uh, any reappropriation of funds associated with the loans. We yeah, no, that's good. No, we need to do that. Okay, as emergency. Just whenever it's going to happen. Just noting that. Okay. And then the fi final is uh, regards to the moratorium and extending that an additional three months. Six. Yeah. Or six. six months. Six, six okay. months. I'm six sorry. Months. My fault. Six months. And uh, you're okay with that too? No, I'm okay with that. Okay. But it's six months from the expiration date, so it's really an eight month moratorium. Right. Right. So we're, uh, we're unanimous on that also. All right. Anything okay. else come before finance? No, sir. All right. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone.